Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Jetway HZ03 AMD motherboard. This one here is a micro ATX board that uses the 880G AMD chipset and the Southbridge chipset is an older one, the 710. It supports AM3 socket CPUs only, okay, up to a Phenom 2 um, quad core. And uh, it has an integrated GPU, the HD4250, okay, and you could actually have this in hybrid crossfire if you wanted as well. Now I do like the uh, heat sinks and the cooling on this board, it is of really good quality as well as the capacitors. So that's one thing that I have to point out that I liked about the board. Another thing that I liked is the support for multimedia, the outputs. Okay, so you've got not just the standard PS2 connections, your optical out, your HDMI, VGA, DVI, USB 2.0 outs. You've got an eSATA as well out there and your gigabit LAN and HD audio. Okay, your 8 channel audio as well. Uh, lots of uh, SATA ports as you can see there, six of them. And right on the corner there you've got a power on off button, a reset and a CMOS clear button in case you're doing some tweaking because this board does support some uh, level of overclocking which I'll talk about in a moment. Now I've put this board on this uh, Lian Li um, cube uh, box which is basically a test box so that you can just um, put your board on and pack everything inside and I have a nice little test system here. It's a mainstream test system for an office PC or for a home theater PC and that's really what you want to use this board for. As you can see here in Windows 7 I've got the uh, voltages set up there 1.3 volts default clock speeds. There's the uh, Jetway uh, motherboard the HZ03 with the BIOS updated and I'm um, running 4 gigs of uh, RAM at those timings and I maxed it out to uh, 1600 megahertz effectively there and you can see there the HD4250. Now you can't do some heavy gaming. This is not meant to overclock and do some extreme gaming on, okay? This is a, a mainstream board, uh, about $80 US. You can go on newegg.com, click on the link below the video and follow that if you uh, want to purchase it or take a closer look at the prices. Now when it comes to the bias settings here, you can see all the different options. A lot of these are standard, okay, and we've seen before and many different systems from Jetway and other motherboard manufacturers. The, um, the overclocking settings we'll get to in a moment. Looking here at the advanced chipset, you can see here you can actually go in and overclock the GPU, okay, so that does come with some uh, options there so you can make the GPU, the, the built-in integrated GPU a little bit faster uh, than the default, okay. And um, what else can I say about the BIOS? I mean, it's it's straightforward, okay. It does have some good power management features, which I liked as well, okay, which I do find lacking on some other mainstream boards. So this one was pretty good when it comes to being able to control the fans and stuff like that. So let me just go into that quickly here. Under PC health status, you can go in and set the threshold, set how you want the fans to be controlled, and then control and see the status of that. So that's pretty good that this BIOS has that. And of course, the overclocking power user settings here. This is where you can go in and control how you want the CPU and the, and the system to operate, whether you want the AMD cool and quiet on or off, and you can toggle things, of course, and increase and overclock your CPU like I did here with this Athlon 2 um, quad core, the 640, from 3 gigahertz, I went in and changed the settings to do a light overclocking from 3 to 3.5 gigahertz. I increased the voltage from 1.3 volts, the default, to 1.45 volts. Okay, so there's the uh, seven shift uh, settings there that you can shift the voltage up or down. And um, I left the memory at the uh, default auto timings there. And um, basically, you know, we did some decent overclocking that way without too much effort. And as I said, 1.45 volts, and there it is, 3.5 gigahertz. There is the bus speed, and there are the memory timings and the settings, so you can see there on auto. And uh, it performs well, better than you would expect for a regular office PC, more than enough for a home theater PC. And you can see the temperature readings there using a default CPU cooler, nothing fancy. And um, I'm getting some good cooling for this basic system. Now, when it comes to scores, pros and cons, I give it a 7 out of 10 because um, 
as I said, for a mainstream board, it does the job very well. However, it doesn't use the latest Southbridge chipset, so it does not support USB 3.0, for example, things like that, which bring the score down. However, definitely a good mainstream board that I recommend for under $80. And I'd like to thank Jetway for providing it, and I hope you enjoy this video, and thank you for watching.